Uh, welcome to the Berlin Select Board meeting. Uh, today is Monday, January 31st, last day of the month, rabbit, rabbit tomorrow. At seven o'clock, we are meeting uh, virtually because of COVID. All right, let's see. Um, call to order at exactly seven o'clock. Announcements, meetings of the Berlin Select Board are generally recorded for transmission on both the Berlin Cable Television Access Channel and YouTube. Your voice image and or phone number may be recorded. All right, so just a little note before we get started. Um, people may be wondering there's why there's few people uh, sitting at the big table today. So just wanna call out that uh, Scott is on vacation and should be back next week with us. And Margaret has started her medical leave. So in her absence, we are dutiful in June's hands, who is taking on some of the TA responsibilities, uh, working closely with the board and all the other committees and commissions. So in Margaret's absence, I have zero doubt that we all won't work together um, to take care of whatever she took care of when she was here, and we will hand her back a well-functioning and running town when she returns, because I promised her we wouldn't burn it to the ground. All right, so <laughs> small things. All right, so up first are our approval of the January 24th, uh, 2022 open session minutes. I'll make a motion to approve. And I will second. Uh, so we'll do stone eye. Keith eye. There we go. Two nothing. All right. <clears throat> Correspondence. Um, June, by any chance, did you see anything coming through on uh, Margaret's email we need to bring up? I did not. All right. So general public comment, what Peg always forgets. We have five folks in the audience. So again, want to make a comment, give us a wave. We'll bring you on up. Um, before anybody in the public makes a comment, I want to say a big thank you to our highway department. Uh, there were many comments all over social media this weekend about how great the roads were. Um, I'm sure it was a very long weekend. I heard them go up the street about 11 o'clock on Friday night pre-treating and then saw them go down the road about four o'clock yesterday afternoon, also pre-treating the roads for that. So Fred and company, Thank you. Uh, we appreciate it. We hope that you somehow have gotten some sleep and are caught up a little bit. All right. We do not see any hands coming up. Nope. So let's bring Chief Clark down to the big table and we can start his report because we have uh, capital planning right at 730 and I want to keep us uh, as close to being on time tonight as possible. And there he is. Hello, Chief Clark. Good evening, everybody. Nice to see everybody. You as well. The floor is yours. Okay, I'll start with the, uh, the uh, December activity report. Uh, wasn't too busy of a month. There was uh, one structure fire, uh, nine fire-related responses, 23 EMS responses, uh, six motor vehicle accidents, and then two assist the police. Uh, Chief, is it 23, 23 EMS responses? Because your report says 237. I know. I, I just saw that. <laughs> I, I looked at that three times today. Never even picked that up. Thank you. So no worries. Like, I'm not sure if it's 23 or 37, but it's, it's whatever right. adds up to 55. All so right, close 25. enough. Yep. Heavy hand on the keyboard, that's all. You know? Yep. <laughs> like, uh, yep. Never was accused of fine motor skills, so. Yeah. <laughs> we got you, no worries. Yeah, so it's uh, not a bad month. And then as a total for the whole year, was slightly down from 20, was 816. But there was uh, a lot more significant incidents this month or this year. We did seem to deal more with the, uh, uh, the opioids crisis at we're dealing generally as as a, uh, as a as a world, so it's like that's still out there, and the guys deal with that. Uh, so it's like, uh, is there any questions on that? It's just like a kind of a regular month. 
Uh, no, I think I'm the good. Chuck Chapaya you know. was in Bolton that we went to. It was a something up off, off a water aquatic on a Saturday morning. So it's like uh, interesting. Yep, good fire. But uh, nope. Uh, going farther down there, we got some uh, numbers for the uh, EMS. We were able to bill for 39,000 and some change. We received credits for 21,000. So that's better than our. Mm -hmm. The billing is down a little bit, but we were, uh, it's our best credit to billing ratio in a while. So it's like uh, uh, better than 50%. So that's like good for us. So mm -hmm. then the, the yearly totals for the end there, the calendar year, you can see right there that we billed for $286,077 and got direct credit for $118,817.22. So uh, that's kind of like where we sat at the end of the year and we're going at it again. July, January 1st, we started again. So just- Chief, you, said, you said we're all up to date, right? Or June, are we all up to date on that or uh, close? A lot, we're really close. I'd say, June, are we through 16 yet to 17? Um, I don't honestly know. I didn't look at it before I came yep. here, unfortunately. I apologize for not having that with me, but it's like, uh, I know June's really helpful on her end with the uh, first financial group. And then uh, we're always doing some type of an upgrade so that we can collect more money, like be available to collect more money when it comes up with, with uh, on the other, like with mass health and so forth like that. With doing some paperwork right now, I got to finish that tomorrow get it back to Jan over to Coastal Medical. So it's like, uh, uh, there's always a little bit of movement there. And, but I think that, you correct me if I'm wrong, June, I think that the old uh, company that we had, that's done. Is it was a Comstar? I yes, I completely that. done. Yeah, yeah, we're done. Done with that, the older stuff. And we still got some sporadic, Coastal Medical from the beginning of them, but that, that number's dropped drastically. We've kind of been chasing and kicking that can hard. So it's like, uh, uh, I'll pay more attention and, and spend a little time with June before your next meeting, kind of bring you up to speed on that to, just so you know exactly where we are. Thank you. you know, I, I did just, um, I actually talked to Hannah, I think it was um, today about that because she sent out the new reports and she, I asked her if she needed anything from us and she said, no that she was actually, they were in the process of sending out new letters to everybody and a couple of address changes. So they're right on top of it and nothing needed to be written off. So nice. we're still in good shape there. Yep. And that first financial seems to kind of filter in randomly. You get a little hit and then go a little while and get a couple of hits. And so that's like, I guess that's the way that works. I don't have a lot of experience with it, but it's like, uh, it's a weird way it seems to be flowing and just trying to do as much catch up as possible on the older ones, get what's, as much as we can what's owed to us, so. You guys have made incredible strides since you started this. So, you know, thank you for all your hard work and dedication to get as much as possible coming back to the town. So thank you for that. All right, Chris, any questions for Chief? No, I don't think so. All right, well, you're not getting off the hook that easy. So, okay, just, just a thing. Um, <laughs> last week, Margaret was going over the budget with us, um, and she was talking about fire. And one of the items that she couldn't quite explain was your request for a new person. And in addition to move a position to 10 and a half hours a day for four days a week. So I was wondering if you could fill us in a little bit more on that and provide the justification for that. The new position was, uh, it's a half-time position. It will be, I shouldn't say it's half-time. It's a full-time position that would only start in January. You know what I mean? It's like half the fiscal year. So it would bring in a firefighter, EMT at a minimum. Uh, if, if, if we had time in between now and then, would, the ALS study is moving forward. The, the, uh, the vendors received a bunch of information so that would drive whether we hired a firefighter medic or we hired a firefighter EMT at that time. So it's a half-time position in, for January 1 of 23. 
I can't, I can't believe it's that far. I had 23 already, but, uh, and then we, what we would do is that person would need to attend the, the fire academy, recruit training for the career personnel. We've had some good luck bringing some people in, firefighter one, two trained at the call level, but we've, we, it just gives us a more rounded operational ready person to send them to the nine weeks to the academy. So you get hammered on the hose work, hammered on the ladder work, you know, there's more time spent on those specialties, which we use every day. So that's that's what the, uh, the halftime position is. Let me just find it here on my paperwork. At 29, 6, 14, that's what that's for there. The one that you said a halftime to 10 and a half hours, uh, I don't have that on my sheet here. And the only thing that I can think, there was some that we... The other, only other thing that I had started out with was uh, sometimes during the day, which is most critical when we need the most personnel, because uh, a majority of our call personnel aren't available during the day. They're only available uh, most of the time at night. If they're around, they always come. They're really good when they're available. But during the day has been the weak point, and that's when most of the calls uh, seem to be on that, looking at the uh, all the... Uh, run data is like in that seven to seven window like that, you know what I mean, is when most of them are. So bringing in a person days, we could move the lieutenant to a day shift, to a, a better day shift. And, and so there'd be uh, like Tuesday to Friday. And with the way that we use the fire marshal operational, we use him Tuesday to Thursday when he's there. So it would allow us to have that window uh, open and, and capture that Monday through Friday when the busier days are. Saturday, Sundays, and nights is when the call people are available. We just want to kind of like that little bit of operational weakness that we have there is Monday through Friday. I'm there. That would give us uh, four people. I'm not going to count myself, but I'll be it. You could add me to both days that you wanted. So we would have uh, three Monday, three Friday, and there would be four Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, other than me. So it's like so right then, now we have three of those days. So, so then what hours, what hours would that person work? Uh, it would be six to six, which is the current shift, unless they... Uh, change that, but they have to bargain that with Margaret, so I don't have any say over that. It's like a TA type thing. So it's like uh, uh, that's all bargaining now. They have, and, uh, so they're they're currently 6 to 6? They run 06 to 1800. Okay. Yeah. 6 o'clock in the evening. And then that night per diem comes in at 6 at night and goes to 6 in the morning. So you have two yeah. people there, but I'm comfortable with that way you are right now because we have that the people available at night to back them up coming from home, but it's, it's, it's very, very operationally sound. But during the day, we just run into the weaknesses and, and if there's no one available to work, we can't, uh, we don't have that money to bring back, like the career personnel are available to work, but we just don't have any money to like pay for that. You know what I mean? We have some overtime for training and incident responses, but none to bring them back to work those shifts. And I looked at it uh, the last two years and it averaged out about 19 days like a year that we hit that, which isn't a lot, but but we're weak those days. And it's like, it, and it, it's it kind of like, oh, we're gonna roll the dice and make sure nothing happens those days. That's a tough thing to like live by. You know what I mean, so with a little bit of like uh, that investment and all that money's important. It's it's a uh, it's not a ton of money, but it's money. We we invest that there, and if that becomes available, then we can hire. We go through the per diem people first. If they're not available, then we can go to the, to the career personnel who are most of the time available, but currently we don't have the money to bring them in. So what are you looking at for overall uh, increases to your budget, do you know? Uh, on the manpower side, there's, uh, just, most of the costs on the major, vast majority of the costs on the, Salary side is due to the contract negotiations. Yeah. 
And uh, if you look at that, that was an increase of, uh, uh, let me just look at this for a second here. Most of them are part of the collective bargaining agreement. You know what I mean? I had to figure all that. People get steps now every year automatically when they move up. So I had to figure all that. So most of that is the steps. And it's like a $13,002 in, in increase uh, with those for the contract. Right. I think it's... Uh, So you had mentioned for the, the full-time person, but you know they're coming halfway through with the fiscal year. So we'll round up because June knows that I have issues with math. Um, so if we do 30,000, so you're looking at 60,000 uh, just salary for, a full for year, this person be, next year, plus the, the cost, plus the cost of insurance, plus the cost of school, things like that. The school is, it doesn't cost anything. The, Okay. He's free to go to the academy, and he's not on a shift yet, so we'd keep the current assignment the way we got it until he graduated from the academy. You go to the Mass Fire Academy, there's no cost incurred by the town. So they go nine weeks here, do all that work that they do, doesn't cost you a penny, other than okay. you're paying the person's salary while he goes. So it's like, uh, it's, it's, I don't think they've ever, I went in April of 78, and it was the same way then. So they don't charge you. And you know, it's mm -hmm. like you go, that's that state. I think they recoup a lot of those costs out of insurance rates for the state somehow. I don't know exactly how they do it, but that's the story I've heard. So, uh... so could you talk to us a little bit more about the schedule? Because if you are running below where you were last year, and it seems like this one, this position is more, you know, uh, as you said, like a more, rounded operations, what is the definitive need uh, to bring on a new person to the budget? And okay, the numbers like, where is that are down. Money come okay. from? Yep, good question. The numbers are down a little bit, but uh, I'm not able to say where, but there was actually one place where we were responding a lot, a lot to like six times a week, six or so, maybe a little less, maybe a little more. And that stopped, so that drove our numbers a lot. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's like, uh, and uh, that is what it is. So it's like we don't have any control over that. We worked hard to stop it before we, it did stop, but uh, it was uh, helping uh, uh, a situation, and we did what we had to do to help. So it's like uh, then that stopped, and those numbers fell off. But as you look across the board, all the numbers, other than that particular one, we did that six times a week times whatever, that's like a, a significant number. So it's like uh, what, th what this position will allow us to do is keep the lieutenant during the day when the most supervision is needed. And there's just myself and the lieutenant when he's on duty, not on the weekends. And then let the other two operations personnel work three days on, three days off, like they do right now. There's no change there, but it would just move the lieutenant to a day position. The fire marshals, Monday to Thursday, and they all overlap. And then this one would be Tuesday to Friday, and they would all overlap again. And we'd have that bookends on the end, the extra guy, uh, Monday and Thursday it would be, a, like I said before, a little bit stronger in the middle. It just meets that operational demand that we see. And it's like, uh, you know, I have to be honest, some days they don't turn a wheel. Like this afternoon, I think we did three or four in a couple of hours, like an accident. And it's like, and it just, there's no rhyme or no, no reason to what we do, you know. So it's like, uh, they had a quiet storm this past weekend, but that before it and, uh, and then after it, they did some, they did a bunch of mutual aid for some suction fires and serious one yesterday, three alarms in Boylston. So you never, you, you can't guess when it's going to happen. So that's why you got to be prepared. And it's like, uh, uh, I don't think you've seen an increase in the, your personnel since I've been there other than this one. And that was put in last year and got uh, moved over, which was fine. They, that's the decision they make. So it's like, uh, but that operational need is still there. And uh, that would bolster us during the day 
when we have the least amount of help available uh, to go on the most calls during the day. So Chief, have, have you um, written anything that you're gonna share with the finance committee when you go? I, um, I went to them, yep. They, I've been there. You already them. did? Yep, them and, uh, yep, went there okay. once. And I'm not sure if, I haven't been invited back, so either they don't want to talk to me, which I'm just kidding, but it's like, uh, 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 I don't, uh, maybe I should be uh, reaching out to be proactive when the next meeting is so I can answer any questions that they may have. But we did a meeting, uh, uh, one down there, I thought they asked some good questions. Uh, did, did, you give them, the, did you give them um, like a description of why your budget was up? A written? I think, I think it was like uh, like a written one, a narrative. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. It's actually right in front of me. That, uh, okay. That should, yep. Can you send that to um, the selectman? The select it should be actually in the his budget package. Yeah. Yeah. That should um, all be there. That's been I it. don't have. No, I, I, can, I can do that tomorrow. I'll send that. I'll the ship them up page. to Mary. And I'll, uh, I'll, I'll CC June so she sees it. They can be sent out to you guys. Do you have that peg? I'm looking now in the folder. Um, so chief, instead of hiring a full-time person uh, where you incur the costs, additional costs of benefits and things like that, is it more economical to hire part-time people? Keep them under 20 hours and you're still achieving your, um, you know, additional personnel that you need for the ebb and flow? Good question. We, we've tried it. I think our day, the per diem shift that we have during the day now is kind of stretched to its end because we're getting to have some points now where it's open. And we kind of got to really work hard to reach out to people. The lieutenant does the scheduling to get people to fill it. That's one slot that works along with the career personnel during the day. It's per diem. And, uh, but that's getting more and more challenging to fill every month when he fills out the calendar. He says, oh, we got five open shifts, but he works it and we might run short one, you know what I mean? Because he works it hard and gets the people to, to take them. But it's like, that's our most challenging one. And I would keep the per diem. And it's like, uh, uh, yeah, I guess that would be it. But I'm not sure, you know, I, and I have to say this the right way. I'm not sure what type of employee you, what you would get if you open that up to be like another, what you're telling me is like, for instance, we did another per diem shift. I don't know if we could fill it during the day. I'm not sure. You know what I mean? We have some really, really good per diem personnel, but I'm not sure if, if our systems tax to the max on the per diem side where we could do a second, another one during the day. You know, I don't know. It's like, uh, it would be tough. To do another, that would be two shifts for them during one, the one we have now every day of the week, and then do another one for five days a week. So it's like, uh, right. I mean, possible. I'm just, I'm yep. just looking at at opportunities to try and you know instead of bringing on someone at again, you know, 60k rounded because it's easier, and you're adding on 25 to 30 percent for additional benefits, you know, for that compared to other options that you could look at and propose uh, besides just bringing on a person, which will help round out the schedule. Um, you know, I don't, I, I, I'm not a schedule person. I would never claim to be for fire, um, but you know, it, it sounds like you're covered. So again, I guess I'm just struggling with the real um, like legitimized qualified quantified reason as to why you need one more person okay. and where that expense is going to um, come from, because I don't think that you're going to reduce the per diem people that you have or reduce the part-time people that you have. So we're just adding on another salary uh, to the town. Yeah, yeah. good conclusion. No, is, I like, uh, I just don't, I, go ahead. So I was just going to say, um, it might be easier, at least for me, to see um, a schedule of when you've got who, not who, but 
you know, when you have certain yeah. people yeah. working, yeah. Um, can you send can something to us that. about yeah. that? And just verbally while we're here is uh, the two career personnel, Mike and John, operational personnel work three days on, three days off. So for instance, say Monday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday was Mike. Thursday, Friday, Saturday would be John. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday would be Mike. It just goes for eternally like that. Right, right. Okay. The, uh, and, and someone on the, in the per diem program shadows them or, or echoes their schedule uh, by the days. They don't do three in a row, but they, they get filled in for wherever they're available. So every day that Mike and John are there, there's a per diem with them. So Thursday, Monday through Thursday, they have uh, Mike or John in the a per diem person. And Dave if, uh, is in the building, not on our inspections. And then I'm kind of like the filler. Wherever they need me to go, I kind of like do the filling stuff. If there's a serious incident, I'll do the command function. But uh, it goes all the way down to sometimes I, if they're out training on one of the trucks, I take the ambulance and meet them at a call. And they, they take the ambulance and I take the truck back. So it's like uh, I have to help put a medical. But so that's what we do during the day. So this, if we it did this enhancement, this that would give us someone would take the someone would be hired to take the lieutenant's place, and he would come and do strictly weekdays, where where it's the weakest point. We don't have uh, we have the most calls during the day, and we don't have the uh, the people to help backfill it when something happens. Just the weak point. There's a lot of days that I'll call and dispatch and say, it's not a mutual aid ambulance because we don't have anybody available for, for a call or they're out on an engine or something like that. I'll say, don't have anybody on the re return, it's not a mutual aid ambulance in or something like that. You know what I mean? So just make that decision. Just piece up the schedule a little bit during the day when we don't have the ability to recall as many call personnel or the off duty per diem people. Um, That's all. Janet had I'll send you a Where'd schedule. Go? Okay. Janet, do you still uh, do you still want to ask a question? Yep. So if we can bring Janet up and then keep it quick, uh, June, I want to ask you a question and then I want to keep on track for capital planning in three minutes. So Janet, wherever you went, can, you're can open. You hear me? Yep. I, I just wanted to say to Chris. Uh, Margaret is very good about putting all of the stuff in the budget and I think there is probably an update on sorry that's my dog an update in the budget for for that did you see it June yeah it was in attached actually to the budget page yeah it was the second sheet it's a second sheet I just wanted to let Chris know it's there so she can look at it that's all I'm sorry I interrupted. So, it's just, so it's just in the um, FY 23 budget um drive is that what you're saying it, it should be in the the fire department budget package i i i, I don't see that okay i mean i don't think peg you don't see that either do you you will have one tomorrow don't worry yep yeah, i can upload it again tomorrow. well okay. no i say it it exists it might just not be in your file yeah. i'm trying yeah. to right. let chief did his part we probably haven't done our part is what i was trying to say so okay uh, All right. All right. Okay. I was Sorry. just wondering, you know, if there was anything written that he'd given to finance committee, because sometimes it's easier for me to read it and decide, you know, is it, um, you know, this makes more sense, I guess, when I read it. Or even an outline, even, a, even an outline of um, the days and, you know, what the schedule is. You know, yep. there's six to six these days and who covers them, not who, but, you know, a person. Okay, I, I see what you're asking now. The yeah. schedule is not on the budget sheet, just the budget item, the, 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 the dollar amount. Right. So those of us that are medically minded get the, the days on, days off schedule and how that floats through. So yeah. that isn't on there. It's just the, it's just the dollar amount. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, I was looking, looking for like schedule, a written. That's something uh, yeah. different. All right, yeah. so, so, if, 
20 minutes. All right. All right. So yeah, we've got multiple people talking. So um, Chief, I wonder if you could do, uh, and thank you, Janet, if we could do proposed schedule and current schedule, just so that we yep. can see where that person fits in. Um, so right. June, from a finance perspective, what questions do you have of Chief? Um, the only major question that I have is that I know here on, and now after Chris said that you guys probably don't have this for whatever reason, um, but he has a narrative that he attached to his budget. Um, and there's two different sections here that I just wanted to double check to see if it's actually in the front, the budget numbers that we actually have is he has the um, enhanced manpower um, where he's asking for, I believe an additional 8,904 and then he is also, in addition to that, asking for personnel, uh, the person that he's talking about to start in January of the 29,614. Um, so I'm thinking neither one of those two are added into the front cover sheet, Chief, is that? That's correct, that, yep. No. Okay, so that would have to be increased there. Um, the other question that I did have and I, I just have a little bit of concern on is, is that you make a statement here about having the lieutenant schedule changed over. So he's actually working four days. It looks like four days a week um, at 10.5 hours. Is that correct? That, that's just one way to do it. There's, there's a bunch of ways to skin that cat, but that's they're a 42 hour a week uh, group. So four days would be 10 and a half hours. Just okay. I, I just I just had a concern because I know that right now we can get away with paying them for a straight 42 hours because the, of the three days on three days off thing and they alternate so some weeks they may work less hours versus the following week they work more. Yep. My yep. only concern is reading this it sounds like to me that he'd actually be working 42 hours every week and if that was true then we would have to pay him two hours every week of overtime correct. I don't believe, no, I don't think so because I think their schedule is 42 hours. That's what there is in there. 42 hour work week is their normal week. I have to like look at it and see how it's spelled out. But I've, look, I've used the, that new contract enough where they work a 42 hour work week. It doesn't, it, some weeks it's a little less, some weeks it's more, but it's an average. So his average right. and, would be so. And I'm an not, average is one thing, but working every single week, forty-two right. hours, that would be my only concern. As far as we actually, I think, would have to pay him overtime. Yeah, and but obvious something to look at. Yeah, so chief, we need you to go back and look at that because if it is true and it's just going to be four hours a week, uh, four days a week at ten and a half hours a day, that's two and a half hours of overtime a week. 10 hours a month, 120 hours of overtime yeah, no, and time and yeah. a half. So that's that's a huge expense that obviously needs, you need to tell us where that is coming out of your budget and it's just not an additional cost that you are uh, yep. putting down. Uh, it was just figured, and I can, I'm very clear in my mind, it was figured that they were on a 42 hour work week. It's the same as uh, the fire marshal being 40. You know what I mean? That shift was 40. The other operational personnel are 42. But that's a good question for like the lady at the uh, that we use for negotiations. You know what I mean? She's the mm -hmm. whoever the labor attorney is there. Simple question. If we, we if could also okay. ask, uh, we could also check the contract if it does say something like that in it. Yeah. Um, yep. Yep. Um, Interpretation. Yeah. You know, uh, with, you know, Margaret and I were the, with Liz were the ones that did the contract and. You may be correct. I'll have to, I'd have to look at that though. Yeah. So I mean, before, do in the morning, going through the door. Right. Yeah. So before we can move on that and vote on that, we need some yep. clear, uh, we need some clarity because if it's just 42 and a, if it's, yeah, if it's just 42 and a half hours a week with that's all it is Monday through Thursday or Tuesday through Friday, yep. you're getting overtime. If it's, you know, uh, time here and then days off and then time there, then right. I'm better with that. But um, for 120 hours at time and a half, that just doesn't sit right. Oh, so no. I need no, clarification. There's been no discussion on overtime. That, 
when you talk, if that's where it needs to go, then it has to be completely revamped because yep. it's like, right. it's like, yep, there was no intention of adding overtime at all. Mm -hmm. 42 yeah. hour work week, 42 right. hours. Yeah, Chief, if you could get back to us with some clarity, I know that you're not up next week, um, but we could always have you back or we could bump yeah. Eric. You know, I'd like, uh, well, I'd just really like Scott like, to be here as well, you know, yeah. to talk about that. No, I can, uh, okay. yeah, I don't mind coming back next week and, and I'll get those, uh, okay. I'll go through June and Mary to get you those scheduled. Uh, if, I'll draw them no, out. But it's, it's probably okay. just a link. So Mary, if, if you're listening, if you could just, you know, you, you're very good at, oh, you have permission to this Google Drive. Oh, you have this permission. Maybe it's just a busted link somewhere. So that's all I'm yeah. sure that it is. Yep. I'll get okay. that stuff to Mary in June tomorrow and they can send it out to where it needs to go. Thank right. you. Ben You're Cole. the best. Thank Take you, Chief. Stay safe. Stay warm out there. We'll see you soon. I'll try. Ben Cole. All right. <laughs> All right. So, All right. Good evening. thank you, Chief. All right. So, next up, uh, running a little bit behind 7.30, the Capital Planning Committee to talk about the FY23 <clears throat> uh, capital budget. So, let's see. Who's here from Capital Planning? I know Anna. Janet is. Anna. Oh, there's Anna. Anna. Bring her on down. And I think that's it. Just those two. Uh, I don't think Scott's capital planning. Eloise? He's just finance, so he can he can stay as an attendee. How about Eloise? Is she on it? Is she? Eloise, are you? Yes. Yeah. All right. Bring Eloise on down to the front. <gasps> There's Anna Crane. Hello. Oh. Hiya. <laughs> I'm good. How about you guys? Staying warm, shoveled out. Yeah, <laughs> we had to <laughs> dig out our dog fence. There was so much snow. <laughs> I don't think I've ever done that before. Mm. All right, Anna, I will turn the floor over to you. I don't know if you want to um, share or if Mary, you can share the capital planning uh, information um, so everybody on the screen can see it. I have it pulled up, if that okay. works. Yep, um, share away. Sharing. Okay, everybody. Love sure that Margaret did. Um, so up a I. Oh no! No, no, stay there. I'm not seeing your screen though. I just see. Do. I just see black. Oh, there it is. There it is. That's not good. Yeah, the best. Oh, now it says you guys can see. Yep. Magic of technology, right? Absolutely. <laughs> um, so I thought that we would start with the easy things, which are the things that we would recommend um, for purchase, if I can get these things to move. Um, so the, the first item would be for the fire department would be a replacement of the chief's command vehicle. Um, and that would be approximately $58,000 uh, for a vehicle equivalent to what he's driving at the moment, um, including all of the command modules and lights and radios uh, that are unfortunately a separate purchase from the um, purchase of the vehicle. Uh, also for the fire department, I, item number two, for $15,000 is an airbag rescue system. And from what the fire chief tells us, it's a group of different in size inflatable bags that you can um, place in different areas such as under an overturned car and inflate the bag and um, lift the car off of them. Off, off um, so these bags come in lots of different sizes. Can you guys still hear me? Yes. Oh, no. Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> Sorry, I just get all these warnings that my internet is unstable. Yeah, my, um, you were, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shut my camera off. Sometimes that helps with the connection. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Um, so those are the two items for the fire department is the car and the airbag. Next, we have the police department. Um, as usual, every year they replace a cruiser. We're on a five-year rotation 
plan for that. Um, so this year they want to uh, replace a cruiser as usual, um, but they're going to keep the current car, which is the um, 2016 F-150 that would be replaced. They're going to keep that F-150 and use it as the chief's vehicle. And then the chief's vehicle that he's currently driving now, the Volt, uh, will then go over to the fire department for fire inspections. Um, so that they have a vehicle over there for that. But Anna, um, I thought that I'm every time skip. I thought every yes. time we added a vehicle that we needed to get rid of a vehicle. So it doesn't sound like we're really getting rid of a vehicle. So we're getting, I'm sorry, I apologize. We are getting rid of the car. Uh, we're not getting rid. We're not getting rid of the car. So the problem is, is that the my understanding is that the fire inspections currently is driving the brush truck in order to um, do fire inspections. Um, and so they need a um, regular vehicle instead of the um, diesel based uh, brush truck in order to go do their fire inspections. So instead of purchasing a vehicle for the fire inspector, um, we are shifting the Volt over into their uh, fleet. We are getting rid of, though, we insisted that the fire chief get rid of his current vehicle that he is driving um, when we replace um, that vehicle with the, the newer model that he's looking for. So the police one, and I'm sorry, I wasn't paying attention. The police one is mm. the hybrid. Is the fire one a hybrid as well? So the fire one is not a hybrid. Um, there's a lot of discussion among our group and with the fire chief. Um, unfortunately, with the size vehicle that the fire chief feels he requires, it doesn't come yet in a hybrid version. Um, so um, unfortunately it would be too small of a vehicle to get an Explorer um, hybrid, which is currently the largest SUV hybrid um, that, that exists. I, so I also, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Anna, you might remember this. It is going to come out as a hybrid, but whoever we have to use our vendor for actually recommended us not getting the first year of this hybrid because they're always known to have issues. So they felt that it would be more fiscally responsible to go with something that we know. And then the next time around would probably be able to go with a hybrid. But I did mention that I do know, and they were gonna look into it, that the Tahoes do come with a flex fuel which might be a better option, but the problem is we don't have a lot of flex fuel filling stations up here in the Northeast. It's more of a, a Southern um, thing, and, but um, but he did look into that. I didn't want, um, um, is, is, am I remembering that correctly, Anna? He did look into it and it said something about it's gonna, it is gonna be coming out, but it isn't recommended um, because of the, the first year glitches, I guess is what you would call it. That's, that's a lot of times what they'll, <clears throat> when a new model of some kind comes out, a lot of times they'll say, sometimes you don't want to buy the first year of a certain model. It, and also, unfortunately, <laughs> um, there was a little confusion. They, um, we did compared apples and oranges, and Eloise might be able to speak with this, or was it John? I don't remember. We actually did a Tahoe or whoever did the research, a Tahoe and an Explorer. And what's equivalent to the Tahoe in the other is either a Yukon or an Expedition. Um, so we didn't really mm -hmm. compare the same vehicles um, for a real comparison, just so you know. That was the other glitch. So I'm gonna ask this question of Eloise because I know that she's on energy uh, since uh, the new chief's truck won't be a green truck. What does this do to our green community standing? Because obviously we're blowing through a bunch of gas uh, when I think that that's not the direction that the town wants to go in. Uh, Eloise is muted. Uh, <clears throat> can 
me I'll unmute. Clap oh, on your wrist. There you go. Hey, Eloise. Greetings. So did my question make sense of what does this do to our green community standing by uh, bringing in a vehicle that is not um, an energy efficient car? As I said, I'll take the slap on the wrist. But that doesn't answer my down. question. What are they going to do to you? I, I don't know, Eloise. That's what I'm asking. What is the impact to our green community standing? They might give you a tongue lashing. So there really isn't any. any. Uh... Um, you don't really want to flaunt it. Probably you'd just be a little slower to get to your goal. Correct. Correct. There yeah. you that go. Would that affect the possibility of getting grant funding? Yeah. Um, for vehicles, maybe, but for other stuff, no, because they tend to be independent. Okay. Right now, I mean, they can change the law in two months. Right. So, Anna, back to the car um, that fire mm -hmm. wants. Is it, and I hate using the terms, but I hear them at work all the time. Is it a need that he wants to go to a bigger vehicle or is it a want? You know, so he's just saying that a new car just has more storage. That's the only reason why we're buying a new car. So, no, my understanding is, oh, I don't have these notes right here. Let me... Hmm, see if I can find them. Um, my understanding is, is that the fire chief currently drives a Ford Expedition. Um, and so the fire chief is looking to replace that car. I feel like it has over 100,000 miles on it. Um, and again, I have, maybe I have that here in this. Uh, and Peggy, the Ford Expedition um, is the same as the Tahoe, Chevy Tahoe. That's an even like size comparison. Right. It's not bigger or smaller. Right. So, it's an even swap. Just a different <clears throat> Chevy versus Ford. And it, and the expedition it, is it. scheduled to come out. In, um, as, a as a 2022 20. model in a hybrid, um, but it's certainly not available yet, and there's no date as to when it may become available. And it may be troublesome because it would be the first expedition hybrid um, on the market. So the cost of these replacements, this is just the cost of the car. That does not, or does it include lights? Great decals oh. and all the stuff that needs to go inside so then is there additional I believe funding? it does have the radio the radios I what thought about, like, it was yeah, so that's I believe a car is like 53,000 the rest is for the other stuff because of course it's not all sold as one package for one car Yeah, it was it was somewhere around fifty eight thousand nine hundred for the entire package: decals, lights, radios, car. Um, so we sort of rounded up to sixty thousand with the um, request that the additional whatever eleven hundred get returned um, if not used. Okay. Okay. June, what questions do you have from the finance side? My only real question is, is that because I was working on my town report over the weekend, um, we did give the fire department money last year to replace a car. And I didn't know how in relation to this one, because I think the note on it that I had, um, I don't have the actual town meeting book in front of me. Um, I just had down uh, replacing car two, I believe. Um, and I just wanted to make sure that we weren't replacing more vehicles than what we should be. 
Well, if you look in the notes, right. so replace car one. Right, but we just talked about giving, how many cars does he actually have? Because they just talk about giving the Volt to the inspection. Which is the one uh, that Chief Galvin used. Right, right. But what I'm saying is, is that if we're replacing car two at the fire department and car one and giving them a Volt, does that mean they have now three cars no per se because we if oh you don't see the other notes it's well it does it says uh sell or trade in current car one how many cars right, do they have the june i i <laughs> so you're just that's, that's an excellent question uh, yeah i don't know how many cars they actually have in total um but I, but I can tell you that car two that we replaced last year was a pickup truck that they used to carry gear and to pull the trailer to fires that carry gear. So, um, so they could get the gear that had been contaminated um, to and from to and from fires. So they had been using a pickup truck that had holes in the floor um, and a rusted frame that we agreed to replace last year. Um, It'd be a good question for the fire chief. I know that truck hasn't arrived yet. Um, and it would be an excellent question, I think, for the fire chief as to what that truck does when it's not going to fires and whether or not it could do fire inspection. Um, I hadn't, I don't know that we've, we've considered that as an option, but I, I think that it's a good question. Um, Just where it was, and then this where it was said it was a the, car. That's my only, yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, it's definitely a pickup truck. So if we could get some clarity on that from Chief and find out how many cars he has in fleet, because I just don't I just don't want to swap and say, oh well, this was so and so's car. Oh now it's so and so's car. Oh now it's so and so's car. And we have we haven't gotten rid of anybody or any car. We're just right adding and calling it something else. Right, right. Okay. I'm happy to reach out to the fire chief um, and uh, clarify how many cars there are and why the pickup truck can't be driven. Correct. And not going to a fire. Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, work. So then I'm gonna skip a couple things because we'll come back to them. Um, the next thing, we approved is for the highway department um, out of free cash, $80,000 for the hot top. We do that every year. That's our, our mm -hmm. standard um, hot top uh, application. Um, then the other thing for the item for the highway department is to replace a 2006 one ton dump truck. Um, it's got 91,000 miles on it and they wanna replace it with an identical truck. Um, except the 2022 version um, and add a plow onto, the, onto that. I don't actually know if the current truck is used. It must be used for plowing. Um, so those are our two highway department approved items. Um, then I'm gonna skip down to board down here um, for their master plan updates. They ask us typically every year or every other year. They did not ask last year, but they ask for $5,000 um, to update or continue the updates to the master plan. Uh, so if we did approve that one as well. Um, so Anna, we're skipping then over the last thing in, in conservation. We are, I'm gonna come back okay. to all of them, <laughs> I promise. Okay. Um, I just wanted to get through all the ones that we approved and, and discuss those and then go back to the ones that actually have discussion based on them. Um, so finally, the last one that we did approve was $197,614 into the Capital Stabilization Fund. Um, these, that number of $197,000 follows the free cash guidelines um, as Margaret states them to us. Uh, so that's why that number is set at that. Um, so that's all our immediate approvals. Um, so 
going. Let me go all the way back up and see where I start. Um, so one of the tenants um, or, or parts of our bylaw for capital planning is to um, maintain a list of the town assets and the current status of those town assets. And so we at Capital Planning um, have been discussing that and have been discussing uh, sort of the best ways of gathering information on the status of, of town buildings. Um, and so what we're what we're looking for is to do a municipal facilities assessment to hire a company to come in and um, give us an idea of what our space looks like, what our buildings look like, make <laughs> recommendations as to buildings that should be could be saved, could be repurposed, and potentially buildings that should be taken off um, out of our budget. Um, Council on Aging also asked um, for, I believe, $10,000 $10, to investigate um, the potential of a senior center. Um, and so what we would like to do is, is add that Council on Aging request to the capital planning request of a municipal facilities uh, assessment. So to add that desire to the assessors that we might be interested in discussing a senior center and might we already have a building that could, could be converted into that. Um, we have left this um, item for discussion with you guys and also for discussion as a possible use for ARPA funds. Um, since it's a one-time spend um, and it would benefit the entire town, we have a bunch of buildings that uh, we on Capital Plan are not experienced enough to determine what should be the fate of those buildings and what sort of quality or uh, status they're in at the moment. So we'd love to hire somebody that knows what they're talking about. Didn't um, Margaret have... Uh, was it a grant that she was thinking of applying for in order to do that? She was, but the cost um, well exceeded um, what the grant was for. So if memory is right, she was looking to gather uh, members from various committees to go around and just take like a cursory look at the buildings and see if we could do some of the preliminary work and then apply for that grant, which would cover the true cost of it, but I don't remember where that was left or if that just kind of scooted back down the priority list. Yeah. Uh, could I ask a question? Yeah, she did arrange with, yeah, go for it. Um, June, how much of this information do you already have on your books? I have the basic information on the books, but I do not have anything as far as the conditions of the buildings. So like I could come up with a, a list of all of the buildings that we have between myself and the assessors, but for me, I don't have anything as, that shows the condition. How many pages is it? Uh, a ballpark. Five? Uh, of just buildings i mean i the assets pages are like i think 33 pages or something um i mean i can get it for you and you can take a look see is it such that you could just email it i could i could print it out and then scan it to you i don't anna do you think that that would be worthwhile because i don't wish to waste june's time well, I know that John had actually converted what I had, and I thought he had worked and put it into a spreadsheet format that you were using. We, John Solera? Yeah, we yeah. do have a spreadsheet. We do have a spreadsheet. Um, I, I'm not quite sure I understand which Google Drive it might be in mm. um, or where it's gone in the Ethernet. Um, but we do have a, a spreadsheet that we put together several years ago with June. Um, which is just a list of the town buildings, town land, town assets. Um, but again, as June said, it doesn't reference um, uh, condition. Um, the other that 
the other thing to note is that $55,000 um, tab that we have listed there, that is what the town of Medfield paid for their assessment. Um, they are a larger town. I would assume that they have uh, larger and more and more buildings than we do. Um, so I'd like to think we would have a smaller cost. I do, I do um, have to say though that we did talk about this as far as from the tiny uh, financial um, team goes, uh, as far as possibility of doing ARPA funding for this. So that way there we would have current information um, and to see if there was a way for us to prioritize repairs that may be needed in the future. But again, it was just a, a thought at that point. I think Mar Margaret was really pushing for this to be used for opera funds because it's a one-time a one-time thing. And she felt really strongly that this is a topic and a subject that keeps getting brought up year after year after year and nothing is being done about it except talk. And I don't mean that to sound like that sounding, but I feel I think she feels like we really need to move on this and without the assessment part of it, it's kind of difficult for people. I mean, John put all that work into the spreadsheet, but then that means somebody then has to go to all of these buildings and look at them and estimate or guesstimate. So I, I think Margaret really was um, the one that really um, was speaking to this. Um, unfortunately, she's not here, um, if I remember correctly. Is that right, Anna? Yeah, but she doesn't need to be here, Janet, because uh, later on in the in the in our agenda, we are going to talk about uh, ARPA funds and how to get suggestions okay. in. So then I would look to you or somebody on capital planning that if that is truly your wish to go into the ARPA wish, that once we put those specifications okay. together, that it just comes over and then the board will look at it and see what's an immediate need, what can wait. We have a couple of years to spend ARPA money. I am in zero rush to say, oh my God, we need to get this done right away because you don't know what's going to happen in six to nine months. So um, that one and then the one for Council on Aging, you know, if, if that's a potential ARPA one, then when we get that, put that on the ARPA list and we'll talk about it all then. Well, I think she was trying to combine those two into one because I think she felt that it's kind of one and the same, if I'm remembering correctly. Well, the, the Council on Aging, I think, is it might be $10,000 to um, mm -hmm. outfit one of the buildings so that it would fit their needs. Yeah. Isn't so, but again, yes, mm, but I think they were investigating. The hmm? question was which building, Chris? They don't right. know yet. Where? Well, I offered the salt shed, but. <laughs> you need to uh no they they don't know what building yet right you have to bring in the planning board because that's actually sure. their purview under the state law they're supposed to be looking at what happens to the town five to ten years out yeah this might be um I, I, my suggestion would be just to leave the fifty five thousand and the ten thousand in the plan for right now um until it's determined whether it will definitely be ARPA funds or not. Okay. Yeah, I think that was our, our sort of hope was just to have it have it there and try and figure out a source of funding for it. Yeah. That's a good, it's a great plan though. I mean, the um, did you speak to the conservation at all? Um, Regarding their requests? Yes, that's just pretty straightforward, I guess. Okay. So that 490, Anna, is it is it <laughs> I'll go their, to okay? Is it their portion of CPA funds or are they asking for their portion in addition to maybe nobody else asking for the rest of the money and they're putting their hand up for all of it? No, it says on the right hand side. First half 490 funded by CPA in. So this is the second half, I assume. Yes, but I think so. Correct. Different question. 
she's saying, does this absorb the rest mm -hmm. of the money from the community preservation? Correct. And I, I am a member of that committee and I did attend their last meeting. And the way it was, they uh, seemed to come back positive for the conservation as well as the historical might have to accept a slightly lesser amount. They didn't have the full documents for recreation because recreation was saying that the little kids um, playground mm -hmm. not up to pa. Correct. And so there was a question as to where we actually stood with it. Right, so is the 490 just their 10% or is it 10% plus? It's, it's their 10% plus some of the general monies available. So and Eloise, am I correct in saying they couldn't, there was a question on the recreation because what they're really looking for is repair and that was not a stipulation in the CPA that is um, correct. Money, so they recreation. Um, what they wanted to use the CPA money for was not um, in the outline for utilizing it. So that's going to kind of have to go back to a rethink. What about uh, um, they did it, ask for uh, one was repair, but they did want to get some new stuff, and that was for uh, I believe handicapped children, perhaps. That's what I was going to ask, that I'm sure that they're going to look into ADA, ADA stuff. So take the repair out. What right, are they looking nobody, at the nobody at the meeting knew how much was for what. All right. Okay, we understood the need. We, or I didn't understand the amount and how much was for repair and how much was for new. So, so if it's a plan in progress, correct? Correct. Right. So it's uh, not final. So we're not yeah. saying that conservation is absolutely getting 490 because somebody could come back and take that leftover pot and, you know, recreation because it's open space. So recreation can come back. Historical could come back. So that 490 is a bit misleading. Well, it could be that part no, of because 490 that's what would they be. Asked for. Well, but part of, in the end, part of the 490 may come directly to the voters if if there isn't enough CPA money. Yeah. So unfortunately we have not, we've not seen requests from historical or recreation. Um, so it's great that Eloise can, can speak to that because from a capital planning perspective, we haven't heard from them yet. I um, thought I, I, thought I sent you the emails. Anna, I um, thought on emails. Yeah, but you, I don't know if did, Anna was you on. You did them. send me the emails. I sent you three emails. Mm, maybe not. I did. I did receive emails, but from an official capital planning perspective, we have not received capital project requests um, from them. So they're not. They're not added to our chart just yet. Um, that's that's not to say that they don't exist. Um, as far as conservation is concerned, conservation did submit a capital request for a second funding of 490000 We already approved the first one um, at the last town meeting. Um, this is for their second half. It would be their 10% plus. Um, but what I've recently heard from Carol Carolyn is that um, CPA is uh, community preservation um, is uh, discussing 325,000 from community preservation. Um, and then the additional funding needed is um, still up for discussion the, from 325 to 490. Well, I would assume that's that because they, I think, have about 250000 in their budget. So I would assume before they come before the town and ask for money that they would say, here's my portion of it first. So maybe that would help. Didn't we speak that it was, I'm on so many committees, eight, 815000 is where they're at with already funding, which 
still isn't enough to purchase the piece of property, if I remember correctly. Right. So they're still looking mm -hmm. at other sources and whether they can come up with them or not is still up in the air. Am I well, correct, we'll leave, mm -hmm. yeah. well, we'll leave that yes. for discussion because we don't have conservation here with us to talk about. Um, no, I was just giving additional. you the numbers. All right. Okay. So Anna, what are you yeah. looking for from personally um, tonight? Um, I have a couple more things to mention just to make sure we have all of our things. Oh, I guess I just have one, uh, two, I have two. One is Berlin Memorial School and the regional school district with Tahanto. We still haven't um, had any official requests from them. So we do have general estimates of, of 68,000 and some other number. I apologize for flipping the screen so fast. Um, and then there is, there um, the is South no Street number. Bridge. There, there is, is no number. Tahanto. Oh, no, you got to come down a little bit, right. Anna. From down or up? Well, I see There's, 55 yeah. and 56, so I think you need to go like 57, 58, like that way. Oh. Uh oh. Wow, down. I see 109. I see 109. That's crazy. Yeah, I think it's I just a uh, technical. Uh, it might be frozen. I think, yeah. 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 Oh, I, I see 68 in BMS. Um, <laughs> now you do. Now I see 40. <laughs> Anna, this is just as um, bad the as last like, thing to run your still... meeting. Yeah. <laughs> Um, the last thing that uh, we still need to, we're still waiting on information for is the South Street Bridge repair. Um, we're still waiting on that engineering estimate. So we have no idea what that's going to come back as. We're guessing 500,000, but we have no idea. Yeah, and um, that too, there, so was those are, dis there was some discussion yes. that might, might, we might be able to get that uh, portion of it under the Build Back Better plan mm -hmm. from uh, Biden and mm -hmm. Harris that uh, Massachusetts might be, uh, will receive some money. So they might be able to sneak that bridge in for there as well. But again, nothing's been released. So it's a juggling act right now as right. to maybe, maybe, maybe. Okay. And I just got something from Margaret uh, about funding for roads and bridges as well. So I think there are a couple of options yeah. once we have some idea what it might cost. Okay. Um, so as far as our needs from, from you guys, we don't really have any. It just says that we have to give you this stuff by the by the 31st of January. So here you go. That's Thanks. Hey, <laughs> Anna, I have one more question for you to ask the chief when you go mm. back to talk about cars. Okay. Could you ask him what yeah. other uh, towns and cities around us have four trucks for their chiefs? Mm. I just mm -hmm. be curious. Mm -hmm. I can do that for sure. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, not a problem. It's too bad we let him go. Mm -hmm. I know. Who knew? <laughs> okay. No, this is great. And and thank you, you know, CPA, uh, CPC people uh, for putting all this together. It, it definitely helps to have it here and have some idea of the grand amount, which was 1.7. Did I see that? 1.2. Carol, 1. scroll down and only I can see it. Yeah. $1,120,619. Look at you, Eloise. Yeah. You go. What was that figure again? 1, comma, 120, one, one, yep. yep. comma, yep. 619. Got it. Thank you. See, it's right here at the bottom. But that ain't. Yeah. <laughs> That includes the 490 for conservation. Um, it includes the 55,000 um, for the public plan, public building plan. So, um, so go down or up depending on where we end up in the next few months. Awesome. Well, well, well done, Miss Anna. And Thank you to the company. Appreciate it. Capital planning and CPA. Yep. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Well, don't go too far. I'm sure if we need you, we'll drag you back to a meeting sometime soon. <laughs> I'm going to run like the fire chief. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Anna, we all know where you live. We're coming after you. Mm-hmm.
Oh, you don't, you have no idea where I am. Oh. <laughs> That's it. You know what? We'll find you. We in Berlin, we have ways. <laughs> uh oh. Right. I better warn well, thank, Troy. <laughs> absolutely. Well, thank you, Capital Planning. I appreciate you uh, and uh, nice work. Thanks. Thank All you. Right. All right, so scooting on through the rest of the agenda, we'll try to we'll try to giddy up. Uh, June, do you have anything uh, extra for the town report from Margaret? Uh, the only thing that I did have to add that came up when I was at a personnel meeting um, was that we received, I believe, the notice from the director of the assessing that she's given her notice that her plan is to retire in August or thereabouts, because she did say that she would stick around for helping with the recap sheet. So she wouldn't be leaving me hanging, <laughs> so she said. Um, I haven't seen anything, but it was discussed at personnel. So that's really- well, is, this, is, this, who, is this the assessing director? Molly. Yes. Molly. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All so right. That's, that's pretty much- the rest of my time was spent trying to get caught up to date on things that are going to start rolling. So yeah, that was about no it. No worries. All right. Thank you for that. All right. Uh, scooting down into old business. So the first one up is to approve the final select board 2021 annual report. So the only thing, Chris, that is different uh, was that I took out the mention of Mr. Lang that appeared in a couple places. Otherwise, all your edits are in there. Um, for everything. So that was just the change that I made. I think it's ready for prime time, Peg. Oh, I, make a motion, I make a motion to approve. I second that motion. <laughs> and I vote yes. <laughs> okay, I vote yes too. <laughs> All right, there you go, Mary. Please move us into uh, get us off of the naughty list and uh, get us on to reports received. All right, uh, next up is a follow-up from the IAC meeting. So Chris and June, I got to find a way to combine your names. Chris, I'll think about it. All right, so I'll leave it to you too. I did, I did leave, well, yeah, you were there, June. Do you want to say anything? I was just going to say they're just, they're still continuing your, their mission. They are. I actually made a couple of notes, which of course I can't find right now. Um, <laughs> but I know that uh, they, they were actually doing quite a few things um, at the meeting and a lot of discussion is coming up. They're still looking at different ways of trying to save money. Um, things like plan, ch plan changes to see what the effects would be as far as co-pays go, prescriptions go, um, deductibles. Um, so that was still being thrown around. And also, they were also looking at other revenue sources that have not yet been, I don't want to say earmarked, because I hate that word, but <laughs> is not already being used for other purposes. Um, there is no definite on anything. Um, and I think they were, were starting to also look at what other towns are offering for retirees health insurance. Mm -hmm. um, just to get some idea as far as what is out there, what they like, what they don't like. Um, so pretty much that's, I think, I don't know, Chris, is there anything else that I missed? You were, you were doing research. Was that the other towns? Yeah, I was going to send out a, a, a request from both the accountants and the HR people to see what they actually were offering um, as far as, oh, there was also a question or a comment had come up about possibility of buyouts because that could possibly save us some money too. So there's a lot some, of ideas being thrown around. Some of the some of those things um, uh, you won't see the savings for a couple of years. Certain things, um, but yeah. And we're also still they were still talking about um, actually getting more actual numbers as far as what the actual cost to the town would be and how much over the course of you know 30 years or however long we want to take to actually um pay for, to actually have the money set aside for the liability 
um, in the future. But where it's brand new, I think we're in a pretty good situation to start it because we'd be thinking about funding it right away versus, yeah, you know, like some of these towns have waited forever. And we did get a printout too that shows what other towns have and what, you know, how much money of a liability they still have open that they haven't funded. So, yeah. Um, they're still rolling. Is there, a, is there a way, I mean, the IAC has done incredible work. So, you know, hats off to them. Is there a way when they start to get a little bit closer that they can provide a, a comparison column? You know, I'm, I'm one of those visual learners. So if you say, sell a building, you know, advantage to Berlin of X dollars, you know, uh, elected officials aren't eligible for insurance, savings of X in specifics, not as much as you can specific uh, as possible. And then just put it this way, because then you could see, as Chris was saying, oh, this is a cost savings, but it's not for 10 years. Well, maybe you don't want to include that one right now. So in different or options. things that we could actually could seem to make sense right now, but could cost yes. us later on. So yeah. Correct. Okay. Uh, could I ask one more question? Of course. I think you need to address are you going to be hiring other people in the next, you know, like you had that conversation tonight with the fire chief? Mm -hmm. Because if you're doing all this cost saving and they're bringing on new people with full benefits, you mm -hmm. really haven't gained anything. Excellent point, Eloise. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, June. Chris, if you can bring those back to the, uh, the IAC. We'll get there. June, we, we don't have another meeting scheduled yet, correct? I don't think we do. I think we did. But we didn't. I think we it's on the 10th. Is it on the 10th? It's on the 10th, February 10th at 3 o'clock. Okay, because I didn't know if they had uh, pushed that out because to give a couple yep. of weeks. I was going to say Jill isn't sure because right now is the big crunch time on getting prices wow. for things. Um, right. But we wanted to keep the momentum going. So yeah. even if Jill can't get all of the information, we might be able to pull a few more things together or just some discussions as far as more ideas that people have come up with or thoughts or like okay. Eloise's or thought there as far as, you know, yeah. adding extra people. Well, yeah. I, I know it used to be a bigger problem because we'd have it all balanced out. And then once the fiscal year started, the school would start hiring and we were back to square one or even in a negative position. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, that's, um, that's a great, a great point. Okay. All right. Well, more to come on that. Certainly can't uh, finish that in a day. Yep. All right. Uh, so speaking of things you can't finish in a day, I know that the next lineup is the budget updates, TA recommendations on budget lines. So question, question. Was that, question? that have Chris yes. have question? Yes, that was. It's exactly what it was. So Chris, question for you. Uh, and actually, well, June, you go first. Um, when does this budget need to be finalized? Because if you tell us, you know, we have a little bit of time. I'd almost want to defer this until Scott returns next week. So there's three of us because I would hate for uh, Chris says yes, Peg says no, Peg says yes, Chris says no, and we're stuck on an item. I would say that would be up to how you feel. I can go through it really quickly and just show you where we're at. Um, okay. Some of the things we might be able to work on over the next couple of weeks. Some of them we may have to wait till Margaret gets back. So, okay. I did right. chat Chris, with is her that today. All right with you? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. All right. There may be some things we actually agree on, Peg. There may be. There may be. Yeah. And uh, you know, and, and so, yes. Um, oh, thank you. Uh, the tea has arrived. Tonight's oh, cup please. is uh, Xena. Princess uh, Warrior, so ode to Margaret for that one. There you go. All right, so Miss June, do you want to share if you can? Actually, I'm going to ask Mary if she can assist to pull it up the um, the newest one that I had sent over earlier today or later today. 
<clears throat> Are you there, Mary? <laughs> Yeah, I'm not sure why I can't see to share that screen though. Um, let me see if I drag this over here. Hmm. I don't know if I can show it where I'm, I'm using a laptop into my computer there. I don't know if it'll oh, be. I see something. That's just a white screen though. I'm not sure why it's yeah. not a white screen with a pencil. Yeah, um, that's not it. All right. <laughs> I mean, I have it on a dual screen here, but I can't put that screen on. I don't know why. Hmm. June, is it in the drive? Um, uh, it's in the drive, but it's not um, not stable. It has a bunch of reference marks in there, June. Oh, I don't know. Oh, I saw that one earlier, and I thought that I was just going after the wrong one. No. Well, don't. Well, maybe that <laughs> guess, answers the question. Oh, who can share? That's who right. I guess that that answers that question. <laughs> Let me just see if I can pull it up this way. I don't know if this will work, but I'll try it. And if not, June, we can table it till next week. I'll just uh, drag it into um, next week's agenda. There's, there's my Zena. Oh. So, oh. Mm-hmm. Oh, you to Margaret. Are. There you go. Princess Warrior. Okay, well, let me do this because I'm. Select the window and application. No. Okay. Is oh. it there? Hey, June, that's it. Yay. Okay. I'll just go through it and you guys can decide what you'd like to do. Okay. All right. Let's see. Oh, what I just do. One moment, please. All right. So when Margaret comes back, do you think that she could like have a tutorial with all of us? <laughs> On how to share a screen? <laughs> On how to share a screen. Yeah. <laughs> just saying. All right. So this is going to be weird because for whatever reason, I can't. Okay, Mary, how do I get rid of the people on the side so that I can go up and down? I think you can just drag the people to another part of your screen. So yeah, there should be like a minimize button oh, because look right at now that, you guys Mary. are all up on the top. Awesome. Okay. Okay. There we go. So just the grab on Peg's head and move the whole bunch of people. Yeah, that's what I just did. I just threw her aside. Thank you. <laughs> Story right. of my life. Okay. All right. So let's see. The first one that we have open is the contingency line item. Are they, are you getting rid of that one for day? Um, actually, Margaret and I were talking about that today and we're not 100% certain if we want to keep it or how we're going to handle the union contract where it isn't finalized yet. We don't know what the effects are going to be as far as the actual budget goes, but it would be nice if we could figure out a way to have funding to offset it and really hope COVID is totally gone. Um, Wouldn't that be nice, huh? Oh, it would be. So if you guys are okay with that, she wants to just hold off on that a little bit longer if possible yeah. so we can think a little bit as far as the funding of, like I said, the union contracts. Okay. Um, the next one is the assessor's office. We had, like I said, Molly had actually come to the personnel committee meeting um, and there was a discussion on that the original budget she had changed around a little bit to decrease um, the assessing ad admin, I believe is what they call her, um, and herself as far as increasing her hours and decreasing um, the person that they would be currently looking to replace for Rose. Um, and she was supposed to redo the budget back to the old way of doing it. So she would just be working the 30 hours and the new hire position would be at 25. But she never redid the budget and did not get back to me before this meeting. So that's why those are still left open. Okay. All right, so that's a hold. Yep. So far, Chris um, and I are in agreement. 
Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else. It's a practice run for me. Um, the conservation agent. Um, the 17,000 that you see there that was requested is based on 12 hours, I believe. And last year, they paid for a temporary part time of eight hours um, of an agent, but they are paying for it out of the wetlands fund and open space. This year, they're asking for a permanent position of, instead of it being eight hours, they are looking at 12 hours is what that 17,000, but they're asking for the general um, funds to pay for that versus it coming out of their special revenues. So um, we have, I have not talked to Carolyn, um, we were, Margaret and I were throwing around some ideas and I'm gonna to try to touch base with her to see if where this account is coming on for the very first time to come out of town funds, if they would be willing to go with the eight hours instead of the 12 hours for the first round, but we aren't really sure exactly how, I don't wanna say needed they are because I know that they're, they're um, a volunteer group and I know that there's a ton of work involved for them right now. Um, but Maddie's just been doing a, yeah, Maddie's been doing a great job, but yeah, uh, I would like an explanation as to why the town has to pay for it and they don't. Well, in, increased hours plus putting it in the general, out of the general fund. Yeah. So if we were to leave it at just the eight hours that she's currently putting in, which right now it looks like, and I'm assuming, and I probably shouldn't, but um, that a lot of the work that's coming out of the open space is in regards to a lot of is based on this, getting this, this land that they wanna purchase. Um, and the other part is coming out of wetlands. So I Maybe. really think that we should talk to them. Yeah. I know that they're scheduled to go to the finance committee. I think it's on the 23rd of February to actually discuss this and, and where they are as far as on their purchase and how much uh, money is still needed. But yeah. just to give you a little bit of of food for thought, um, the increase in the line item, if we were to just do for eight, um, eight hours per week, would come out to about $11,800. So it is a little bit less, not, mm -hmm. you know, not quite half, but it, it's a little bit less. So I'll talk to the Carolyn about that this week and see what we can come up with. Maybe, maybe having um, it stay eight in this, in this budget, and that if they want to do 12, then they pay the, dif di the difference. Mm -hmm. Could be a possibility also, but I know right now that um, they don't have a ton of money. I don't have the number off the top of my head in open space, and I don't know how much money they're planning on using to go towards this land purchase, but mm -hmm. um, I'll talk a little bit more with Carolyn about that. All right. Um, let's see. The next one is fire department, um, and based on tonight's meeting. Mm -hmm. I did not hear that we came up with any new numbers to throw in there. So um, right now that's all on hold. Yeah. Yep. Um, the communication center is the next yellow line. And currently we are just estimating here what we would um, having to have for an assessment for Neshoba. Just before I left the office today, I did notice that our new director at Neshoba did send out a proposed budget, which is the first time we've seen a budget on the, I'm talking, changing hats here and going on as um, the finance team. We have not, uh, the finance committee of Neshoba, we have not seen a budget. This is the very first one that we've seen. So I really didn't have a, a, a lot of time to take a look at it to even guess. Looking at it really, really, really quickly, it looks like it was about a seven, I think it was 7.6.7% increase, um, about 13,000, but we wanted to get a little bit more detail as far as where we stood on that, also because we had lost one town in the group, and mm. I know the state was supposedly agreeing to cover that, um, and I just wanted to double check on the numbers before we throw anything out there. Sounded like to me when I was at the last meeting, June, that, um, they may cover it for one, possibly two years. Then, then you know, it may, 
increase the assessment. And I know that they were looking at another town too at one point. I don't know how that's. They're, they're that considering, is, right? um, I think three different towns. Nothing's been done, but. Right, right. So yeah, we didn't feel comfortable on even giving a guesstimate right now. So we'll definitely hold off on that one. Yeah. Um, let's see, highway. Highway, what came back, you did vote on the full-time wages and the expenses on the 24th. Um, what happened was, um, I think the numbers that Margaret had in here were prior to market rate adjustments and the fourth person was not added in. That's the Fred replacement? Um, actually, the Fred replacement was that, well, what the original number that she had in there um, did include Fred as Fred going back to his old position is what yeah. the budget was based on, which has changed um, mm -hmm. since then. And we also did not have the original um, market rate adjustments for the two operator driver mechanic uh, laborer positions had not been adjusted. And the third, fourth person coming in um, who has not yet been hired, which was the combination of the custodian driver laborer slash cemetery slash that new person. Yeah. So, <laughs> okay. so that was the difference between what was originally there versus what had been put in and you had voted on. So the difference there would be the $281,049. What about the um, um, five hours of a uh, potential admin assistance? Where is that? What happened was, is that last, last year, we had transferred $16,000 from the cemetery and it was put into the part-time wages of the highway. So you'll see here where town approved in 21, the 14,000, and then last year it bounced up to 30. Mm -hmm. um, so that's where that amount of money was. Now on Fred's budget, if you look at his sheet, um, because there will be a fourth person coming on that will take over the building maintenance and cemetery. Um, he's moving that 16,000 up to his full time. And so you would have normally, instead of where you see a savings of 5,741, that would have been approximately $11,000 more if he did not put in for the request for a part-time uh, administrator of 10 hours a week, I think is what he's putting in here mm -hmm. for that. So that's where that decrease is. So he is putting in for two part-time, well, one part-time part seasonal person as needed also for police details that were needed. And he's also putting in for the town administ, I mean the um, his assistant admin to help him of eleven thousand. So that's where that little bit of a difference is there. And given they have had <laughs> limited to no growth in the past two decades, this kind of sounds yep. like a no brainer. But yeah. we'll wait till we vote. Okay. Okay. And let's see. The next one is snow overtime, which is also because of the market rate adjustments, it would also yeah. offset this. Um, because of that, it would be at time and a half for the full timers. Okay. And that one there also would be a revote um, just because it was less the market rate adjustments. You wanna do these now, Peg, while we're here? Yeah, yep. So do you want a motion for the uh, Public Works wages full time, wages part time, and the snow and ice. Yes, 114, 115, 118. Okay, then I'll make the motion to approve those three lines. Second. Okay. Don't I? 
Keith I. There you go, Joan. Hey, thank you. Yay, right. they go away yellow. Yay. They will. I will update this for you all tomorrow. Um, let's see. Next one. Let's see. Is the Board of Health. Oop, oop, oop. Oh. <laughs> Don't you do it. June, do not um, on color. Do not. <laughs> She was, was going to take the yellow away. away. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I know. Don't touch anything. Don't um, touch anything. Not tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so the next one that we're going to look at is the Board of Health. They had put in their budget to request for the clerk that they have in the office. They were originally, it was put in at the 62... 31. 6231. Um, that there would give a COLA only. She was also part of the market rate adjustment. Um, if we left her where she is, her market rate adjustment would go up to 6515. But there is discussion where they want to increase her hours instead of it being 5.88 hours a week it would be moved up to 10 is what they were requesting. Um, again, this is almost on the same line of the conservation agent as far as increasing hours. Um, that four hours would be an additional $4,300. So would, the budget line there would go up to 10,800, um, say $10,900. So I'm gonna talk with Board of Health a little bit about that and see if there's any way that maybe we could move it up to say eight hours um, where we are doing a market rate adjustment increase instead of going all the way to 10 um, and see what, what they feel might be doable this year just because it would be such a large um, increase. Um, I know that with some of these budgets, you can't really use a percentage because on a smaller budget, sometimes the amount that changes is huge. Um, so, I mean, that would be an 81%. Wow, I don't think so. so. It looks huge. So when you look at it that yeah. way, it looks nasty because of the percent yeah. increase. Right. Um, but just with a market rate adjustment, it's already at an 8.7. So yeah. I'm gonna talk to Board of Health and see if there's any way that maybe we can do something um, this year for them to help because I know they're really shorthanded in the department, especially where you've got all the COVID stuff going on mm -hmm. um, on top of everything else. So, but that's okay. on hold right now as far as no suggestions for today. Okay. okay. Um, the next one is going to be Neshoba Health. Usually they increase very minimal amounts. I know before they never made an increase at all. This year, you'll see that there's an increase to 9,853, which is an extra 1318, which is a 15.4% increase. This year, they have changed the way that they actually do the calculations. The allocations are now calculated by using a $4.33 per capita rate based on the 2020 US census plus a 5% increase. So that is the dollar amount there that you're seeing of the 9853. Okay. And the same thing goes with the next line of Neshoba um, nursing. Again, it's the same and they're basing it on, on the assessment now that they have a formula that they're using um, and these are things as far as what they do for the town of Berlin, um, the contact tracing, which of course is new. We also have a visiting nurse, the flu clinics and that type of things um, that they offer to the town. So would you like a motion to approve Neshoba Health and Neshoba Nursing lines in the budget? Yes, please. So moved. So seconded. Uh, Stone Eye. Keith, I. There you go. Yay. Oh. Two more down to uncolor tomorrow, June. All right. Um, at least a couple are out of the way. Correct. 
All right, next one is recreation. Um, recreation, we were still talking about and working on. Um, there are unanswered questions still at this point in time. Uh, I don't know if you have the budget in front of you or not, what they had sent in, but no, the numbers... you know what? I don't think we, we haven't been getting that stuff. Um, at well, least Mary, I haven't. Yeah, Mary, can you send out a link as to what drive that, uh, where they all are? Please. Not now. But... I'm sorry, where what all are? Where all the, the, the uh, all the finance information for all the budgets with all like the backup sheets, justifications. You know, like how Chief was alluding to, oh, he wrote the narrative. And then June just mentioned that Rec has some stuff. Recreation, so though, came in a little bit later than the rest of them. So um, if, if Mary can't find it, just let me know. And I'll, I can always make photocopies of it and scan it in for you. Okay. Um, but just to give you a quick um, rundown as far as what we're seeing right now is they had actually put in a request of the $16,000. This is based on their estimates that they're using. Um, they did try to originally reduce that 16,000 on their budget form so that it only increased the 2.5% as requested um, from it, finance and Margaret and the problem with that was one, we did not get copies of the new contracts that they have with True Green, who is, I believe, the person who is doing the maintenance on the fields. Field. Mm -hmm. um, but based on the numbers that were, were put in the narrative part of this and looking at it, it looks like that there, I changed it so it actually came up to the total. So they're actually asking for an additional $4,000 over last year's budget. And there also was some um, discussion on the narrative that they had was also something about the playground, which yeah. I'm assuming is the playground that um, came up recently as far as the safety issues go with it. Yep. So I don't know if they're planning on doing the upkeep to that. And this would just bring it up to safety code. Yep. Um, not 100% certain and neither was Margaret when we looked at this and we're talking about it. So right now, this is also gonna be on hold until we find out further information on it. Um, Cause there's also no mention of their revolving fund that they also have access to, which currently has $21,000 in it. So okay. I'm not sure if there's additional, you know, need or expenses that they're planning on using that money for. Um, so I don't wanna make assumptions until we can actually talk to them about that. So we're gonna keep that on hold. All right, and I think one of the last emails I saw, there was a, a response from Maya that they wanted to come out and look at the equipment, but unfortunately, we had a small event over the weekend, so I'm sure the equipment's buried. Yeah. Yeah, and that's what they kind of were saying is because it was just before that, and they knew that the snow was coming, so as soon as it melts down, they'll talk about coming out. Um, I did talk to Margaret about it, and I believe, she, I will double check with Fred. Um, had sent out an email as far as if we can, at, for right now, until we can address the safety issues on it is to, to rope it off so that that way yeah. there nobody uses it and to keep people away from it at this time. Uh, also, the other discussion that came up was is that a lot of the neglect is, is basically neglect of the upkeep of this. I don't know who was originally um, in charge of overseeing some of the yeah. yearly maintenance, whether it be making sure that there's enough wood chips or whatever it is that mm -hmm. needs to be down and just checking on the equipment. So I know when I was talking to Margaret about that, I need to check with recreation and with Fred to see if it was highway or rec or a little of both or who I, it is. But I, I honestly thought it was recreation over the years. Um, I could be wrong. It could have changed at some point more recently, but I thought it was recreation, you know. If I remember correctly, I thought there was also another committee, volunteer committee that were, that actually built it or put it together. So, but that was my thought as I was thinking recreation was gonna do the upkeep, but as of right now, there's nothing in the budget per se for it. So that's something that we need to look into. And also, they, they also could have shared, um, like paid less because whenever the school would order chips or whatever, yeah. they would order an additional amount that recreation would pay for and then they would just get them spread. Okay. <clears throat> uh, 
the next one that we have is the CMRPC, uh, just the regular assessment for the year. At the the 951, which is an $88 increase over last year's. <laughs> and again, this is where that percentage really like hurts sometimes is that's 10%, but yeah. Yeah, I know. If you look at the actual amount, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Do you want, do you want to talk other... about the ESBIT Regional Housing Consortium and then I can make a motion? I will. Um, pretty much what it is, is this year we are level funding it. Uh, there is no additional increase that we have been aware, made aware of. Right. All right. Then I will make a motion to approve the line item for CMRPC and the ESPIT Regional Housing Consortium to approve them. Second. Uh, Stone, yes. Keith, aye. Too. All right, two more. Thank you. And I believe the last one, I think it's the last one. Yep. So the last one is the Worcester County, uh, Worcester Regional, Worcester County Regional Retirement Assessment. <laughs> um, this here is the new dollar amount. This is the amount that is a discounted amount if we agreed to pay for it on July 1st. Okay. And the original amount, instead of it being the 605, I believe would have been 616812 if we did not, if we do not pay it on July 1st. Okay, well, I'll make a motion to approve the line item for Worcester Regional Retirement. Um, do I hear a second? I'll, I'll second. Oh, and then I'll okay. vote. Uh, Stone Eye. You have to think of who you are. Stone I do. Uh, I do. Stone Eye. <laughs> Key Fi. <laughs> All right. Hey, so that's not bad. So we approve one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. And then unfortunately, all the other ones, June, you need extra uh, skinny on. Yep. So there wasn't much we could do. Okay. Well, wait, wait, wait. Go back to um, the assessments that you were just at. This was bothering me today. The whole school um, stuff? Just uh, look at uh, the ASABET assessment. The, over here, the, wor the, vet the words. Yep. I have, to, I have to move you. All yeah. right. Okay, go ahead. So assessment, how it's spelled with ACIBET assessment, it only has <laughs> three S's. The rest of them all have four S's. Well, look at that. You need to fix that for us, June. <laughs> Voila. There you go. Ask and you shall receive. Uh, I can do something. Yay. <laughs> June, I'll drag uh I'll drag this item over to next week's agenda. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you, June. Nice Thanks job. You. Nice that wasn't job too, too bad. Cleaning it all. Nope. Nope. All right. So next up is uh oh, my battery's on low. So we're gonna have to giddy up. Uh Next up is review and approve. So if I suddenly drop, it wasn't me, my battery died and I'm too lazy to get up. Uh, review and approve select board uh, annual town meeting action calendar. So thank you, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that's the calendar, which I believe from last time had no changes to it. Am I correct? correct. Mm -hmm. So I will make a motion to approve the select board annual town meeting action calendar. Second. Stone eye. Keith eye. Done. Yay. Uh, yeah, because I think the only question that we were potentially thinking about that was to open the warrant tonight or open it next week. But you know what? Um, I'd rather wait till we're th we are three and then we'll open it. All right. Um, Next up is review and approve notice on ARPA funding requests. 
So I know I had take the, the, taken a look at it, Mary, you had done a, a, a lot, a lot of work on it. I was just wondering if there was any way that we could shorten it, uh, you know, maybe put links out there to either our meeting where Board of Health, uh, is it Board of Health? I think, yeah, I see Paul's face. Um, you know, our meeting that we talked about it, Margaret's presentation that she went over, that June went over again, just to just to shorten the wording, because I'm I'm fearful that the more words there are, the less people will read it and take action on it. So I had sent back to Mary, she said stalling for time, um, to try and find like an updated draft that I had put together where I uh, crossed out a bunch of things and added some information, June, that you had asked for, for specifics of when you send things back to us, your name, who you are, committee, what do you want, costs, you know, et cetera, so that we can just start building a list. So let me see if I can find that. Uh, I can share it. Do, do we need to approve this tonight or... Um... Well, maybe, maybe to. not tonight, but uh, at least, here. Yeah, let me, let me share, share screen. Uh, You're asking for feedback by February 28th, so. Right. Yeah, so here's what I sent back. So Chris, you should have it, it's in an email. So all this stuff that I crossed out, you know, how it works, what's our direction, just basically, basically boil it down to what is it? This is uh, the four areas that we're gonna use it. Um, I question whether just to use Google because you don't know how many people actually can get out to the interweb uh, for this and just to use that as a preferred method, but you know, maybe go by old dog and pony of just email us, you know, selectmen at town of Berlin. Well, um, it actually just, it I mean, hopefully it's really popular and I get hammered with emails, but it would be better if it just got dumped into one um, place. But um, I may, how many could there possibly be? Even if it were 20, it's something I could just drop them all into a Google Drive after I receive emails. So it's fine. Okay. All right. So oh, the emails cool. will come to you and then you'll drop them, Mary, for us. Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. All right. um, the only thing, Peg, if possible, could you go up to how may ARPA funds be spent? Yeah. Because I I, we're not actually using all four of those. The ones that we're really focusing on is number three. And I know in Margaret's presentation, she had had that. So it's bolded. Okay. The number three. You okay. don't have to remove them, but uh, just that's the one right now that we're focusing on because you can do a little bit of different things because of it. Okay. All right. Yeah, so that, this was, that was my only question too, is you, you, the criteria so people understand, you know, uh, I, you know, I want a, a, a town pool or, <laughs> you know, I think that came up before. <laughs> yes, it did. It did. So, yeah. Okay. So, I mean, I, it, you have to follow certain criteria. So, you might as well have the criteria so you can see whether you're, what you're thinking will fit. Mm -hmm. So June, did, did I grab like everything that you were looking for? Um, I believe so. Yeah, because you know, if it comes in from, I'm just gonna pick on historical because they're the first ones that come to mind. So it'd be from the historical commission, but you know, it would be June Miller, you know, as the chair that everything would kind of run through as the primary contact. Same for EDC, same for REC, same for conservation, anything from a committee or a commission base versus, um, you know, uh, June Poland, regular citizen person thinks that we should blah, 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 and put that in there. Yeah, because my big thing was, is that I wanted people to actually think about what they're asking for and how it's going to affect the town after the fact if we were to to do this project would it cost us anything could it save us some money well yeah and the thing yeah. is too you know let's you know let's just pretend that yeah we're going to do a pool uh but then where's all the money for all the upkeep and blah 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 so it's not only you're asking for it but you got to start thinking out here what is going to be the impact on it we have the money today we're not going to have the money in three years you know type of thing 
And you left the amount in there as far as the direction on the spending, right? You didn't cross all that out just above this. Say that you again. Did. Yeah, she did. And that's right actually here. Margaret specifically told me to put that in. Yeah, no, so. you want to keep all of these that says what yeah. you can use okay. the, yeah. All right, so let me, yeah. uh, I'm gonna remove the strike through. Remove, strike through. There you go. How's that? Good. Better? Do you want, Mary, do you want me to put this back for you? I can. Oh, go away. It's just an option for people. Some people do like using that. And then for people who don't, they'll use a piece of paper and a pencil and drop it in the U.S. mail. So that would be me. All right. <laughs> Who's going to drop it on her way into the office? All right. June, don't use the drop box on the way into the office. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. You got you to gotta bang on Mary's door and send it through. Okay. <laughs> All right, so then all we're removing really is just how the process works, you know, for that. Um, so it's, here's what we're doing. Here's what it is. Here's how it can be spent, that in bold. Um, scooting down, scooting down. Here's the primary direction on it. Uh, here's feedback. Yeah, by the end of next month and preferred and then email, uh, preferred regular mail or email. And then Mary, you can just add those two links and those two URLs. Okay. And then what I've done, uh, June, I've gone ahead and for all the meetings that we have in February, like Margaret had a line about upcoming potential hires I threw that in there, um, something in here, because I want it to be in front of everybody to say, you know, and for us to say, do we have any? Oh, great, we have 10. Oh, we have none, so that we can like push, push, because when this closes down, I don't want the, oh my God, I didn't know that I was supposed to get it in by the end of February excuse. Okay. So, all right. So, so Chris, are you good with this? Yes, would you like a motion to approve? Yes, I would. So moved. Done. All right. Uh, oh, stone. Stone <laughs> eye. <laughs> Be alone. Keep All, right. All right. So, Mary, what I'll do is I will resave this. I'll carve this out and I'll send it back to you and we will be good to go. All right. Uh, Reason, ARPA, Doc, Mary. All right. All right, so let me stop sharing. All right, so what's coming up on the agenda? We're getting there, Chris, we're getting there. Um, uh, oh, this one should be easy. We're down to new business. Approve the $5,000 fiscal year 2022 local cultural council allocation contract with the Mass Cultural Council uh, for signature by me. So moved. Second, Stone Eye. Key five. All right. Mary, let me know when that's ready and I will uh, pop down if my internet goes out tomorrow. Well, I'll be down there sooner than I thought. All right. Um, next up is to approve the amended Agricultural Commission regs and rules for the community garden. Uh, so moved. Second. Stone eye. Key five. Done. All right. Boston Kane Award. Um, so Mary, you put some great stuff out there. Where is it? It's out in the, oh, let me pull it up. Um, Mary, which one is it? The, Cause I have two Boston Kane award rules. And then there's another uh, award. There's one that's PDF and there's one that's Word. Oh, so they're the same. And then the other, the, then the last one in that drive, there's the 1955 original typed rules. Which I thought was very cool. Um, yeah. All right. So. Well, uh, if, if, the, if it's the PDF and the word are exactly the same, correct? 
Yeah, if you want to edit live again, like you just did, you should get, pull up Word or something. I, I don't think I had any problem with it. But how about you, Peg? You don't need the pictures. I just threw them in. But if you want to take that out, that's fine too. No, I like the pictures because there was some uh, uh, either yesterday or today. There was a question about the Boston Cane Award, and actually, I think Barry responded that you know the cane sits above us when and if we ever go back into the office, and that we get you know a little pin and a certificate, uh, pen, pin, pin, pen. So it's just kind of nice to see. I didn't even know that um, Ray Ellis was the one who did the pins. I know. That's nice. And, you know, he he did pins for the school. Um, bluebirds, little bluebirds, you know, and the, the, you'd purchase the pin and be able to wear a little bluebird. Yeah. Because no, that's so it. it's nice. So, you know, if we're OK with the rules, I think there's just an open question on what do we do for those unfortunate residents that we say, oh, so-and-so is up next and unfortunately so-and-so passes away. Do we uh, honor yes. them and still give it posthumously or do we right. go down right. to the next person? So, so Mary, um, I was thinking maybe we could add um, something about when the oldest person who has uh, the pin passes away do you think well is Eloise still on could she let us know um, well she does okay so she lets you know when the person who is the oldest in the community I'd say uh, as fast away. as she can yes on top of her other things that she does yes so but I didn't it, know. It, but there was a lapse it's not anyone's fault but Mr. right right the, the prior person passed on July 4th and well, then if that process is already happening, then I'm not, I don't know whether we need to add anything, Peg. Well, well the question is that you, I think you had, do you award them? Yeah. And I don't know why you oh. wouldn't, as okay. long as the person isn't offended or does not want, because it already says in the rules, if you want to pass over the award, that's already been in the rules. Mm. If you don't want the notoriety or you think you're 20 still, or you don't want to be, vulnerable marked as being a senior living in Berlin alone or whatever mm. you're on the lamb but um <laughs> if you do want the honor then it's already it's already that's already in the rules and I don't know if, if it matters if if you passed or not okay well I mean what do you think Peg well well what do you you knew you knew Mr. Lange Yes, I did. And, and I had spoken with his son, Jeff, like literally on earlier that week and made sure that his dad was still, you know, in the house and a resident of Berlin. And Mr. Lang was thrilled that he was going to get it. And unfortunately. But wouldn't the family um, still want that? I might. can ask Jeff if he would want it as a, you know, great memory for his dad. Yeah. All right. So why don't I table oh, Ellie, this? Ellie's got her mic open. Oh, Miss Ellie. I was going to say, if they've had a long-term commitment to Berlin, then definitely give it to them. And you have well, to be a I resident for five years. A, you know, they just move in a little while ago and are, particularly if they're indifferent, just let that pass. But Mr. Lang has been has had a long term commitment. So yeah, and you've already told, spoken with the family. Correct. Yeah. Okay, that's all I had to say. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Miss Ellie. All so, right. So then, it would be helpful to me if the COA wanted to make that contact to make sure that they want that notoriety. Or to, you know what I'm saying, to make mm -hmm. contact with an elderly person or their caretaker if they were that old. Um, so I wonder if Victoria already has done that because she was she was going to, but I think she's now holding to know what you want to do. Okay, all right, because I mean I have I have an update from Council on Aging, and that was one of the notes I took that she's checking into the Boston Globe pin the processor. 
whatever. So tell me what, how you want to handle this, Madam Chairman. All right, well, we got to get it up because now I got the warning that my battery is running low. Um, I say in this case where the Lang family was notified that we do honor Mr. Lang and give it to him posthumously. And then going forward, this is what we're going to do. You know, we could say, oh, it's so-and-so, an unfortunate app, uh, you know, happens. We've already been in touch. I agree. Cruel to the family to say, oh, sorry. Um, where it's a pin and a letter. Let's let's give it to the Lang family. Yes. Um, okay. So I'll make the motion to give the uh, pin to the Lang family. Absolutely. Second, Stone Eye. Key Fi. There you go. All right. So, okay, Chris, you got about two minutes before I uh, my battery poops the bed. What do you got for board questions, comments, liaison updates? I have none. Uh, Council on Aging. I went to their meeting. They got their van is up and running again. Um, the last round of grab and go meals was 70 meals at about $1,100. Um, next time they're gonna do it, it'll be March. Um, Pen Pal program, 12 students have volunteered. Um, and of course, I think maybe everyone knows now that Lowe's donated buckets of sand and there was uh, uh, buckets and then sand and salt from the highway for seniors that need them for their walkways. Nice. Uh, what? Nice. Oh, um, they're gonna do a Center for Living and Working webinar, which you could look into on the Council on Aging website, I would imagine. And they've discussed the COVID testing dissemination, the next Powderhouse News, and the Boston Globe pin, checking into it. And the next meeting will be February 22nd at 4 p.m. online. Okay. That's it. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you for that. Uh, I will entertain a motion to go. Uh, so in the event there's another storm, thank you, Highway, in advance. And please go further out east, whatever is coming towards us. <laughs> and I would make a motion to adjourn. All right, I will second Stone Eye. Mary, the letter is on its way to you. Keith, I, and thank you so much, June. You're very welcome. Well thank done. you.